And if you guys have any questions or if you think of any other flowers you might want to see, definitely uh, let us know at the end here and uh, we'll do some cool flowers, right? So there's a couple of different sizes. Um, the one that I put in my tube is this bigger one. You can see it, it's a 124. There's a 104, there's a 103, 102, 101, and they just kind of all have the same shape but they are um, just obviously different sizes. So let's make some flowers, let's see. The first and most common flower, I would say is a rose. Um, kind of make sure you guys are close enough to see this. Let me bring you in closer. Um, so let's see here. Never done this before, so bear with me. I'm kind of new at the whole painting, decorating deal. So I think, I think I'm in a good space. Hopefully you guys can see this close enough. So I start and I rotate my stick as I'm piping my bag. So it's kind of a dual thing here. And I just start and turn it. And actually this is a really bad tip, so we're not gonna like that. The icing is it um, smooth enough, your flower isn't gonna quite come out right. At least that's how it works for me. So I make my first petal in the middle and that's gonna be the center right there. And then depending on how big you want the rose to be is obviously how many petals you add. I usually follow a system of three and then five. I like to use odd numbers. I think that it just looks better on the cake. Um, and I do that also with how many flowers I put on the cake. I do a set of three or a set of five. I just happen to aesthetically like the way that looks. So we're gonna make a big one though. So we'll do one extra petal on the inside one more of those, and then we'll do three. Like I said, I like to do my three, and then I like to do five. There you go. Booyah. Got a, fl a flower. It's kind of sliding on my stick here because it's getting heavy because I'm taking, taking my time. And I use scissors. Excuse me. I wish I could get this a better angle, but I use scissors to pull it up off and place it onto the cake. So. Not only can you make roses with that tip, but let's see here if I can get this moving. You can make kind of a small closed mum, and it's the same deal starting here in the middle and doing your first little rosebud kind of beginning. And then you're going to do smaller loops around the edge of that. And when you do that, It makes more of a closed flower, kind of like a mum. If you use a different color, it probably look a little bit better, like maybe a deep purple for fall or something like that. Let's see here. Let me see if I can back this up a little bit so I can show you guys on the board here. here. I don't know if that's too far away. You can make kind of a you can make a tropical kind of flower, like a hibiscus, sorry. We are still open for business right now, so bear with me, I kind of get distracted with the door. Anyhow, can you see, let's see, hopefully you guys can see my skin scan here. And you just kind of wiggle like that. You're gonna wiggle it to three, two, four, five. That makes a really pretty, I don't know if you can see that, pretty tropical looking flower like that. Um, let's see, what else do I need to do? Let's move to a different tip for funsies here. This one I like to call the mum tip just because that's the flower I use to make it with. It's kind of a funky little guy. And I always would buy those kits before I was actually decorating and be like, what in the heck do these things go with? And what do I do with it anyways? So if you guys have any tips and you're curious what you can do with them, just let me know. Um, let's see, so this, make it a little bit easier. I'm just to make sure you guys can see, it's the first time doing this, so I hope it works for everybody. I'm gonna make a little mound, like a little small buttercream round right here for the center of the flower. And then we're gonna around, I don't know if you can hopefully still see that in the picture, and lift up while you're squeezing. Mm -hmm. 
and you keep working your way around. Sorry, I know you can't probably see everything that I'm doing. I have a busy phone. Lots of people. <laughs> Sorry, you guys. Uh, ooh, I love that purple. So eventually you make your way around. So you close up the center of the flower. It's kind of hard because I'm doing this on this board. And you got yourself a little mum right here. Let's see, what else can we make with this flower? Oh, and I don't want to forget to do a basic daisy. We're back on the, the rose tip, the 104 like this. Let's see. And you're just going to go out and back in, out and in, out and in, and let your icing kind of pile up on top of itself. I don't know if you guys can see that. And when you go all the way around, it looks. See if I can press. And you got a little daisy there. It's another flower you can make with that same tip. So it's pretty versatile, all the different things you can do with it. And you kind of just have to play around and see. You know, you could do, let's see here. One day I tried to uh, try to do big petals like this. You do a couple of those. Obviously, you have to use different colors, but I'm just doing this so you guys can kind of see the different things you can do here. And so there's, that's kind of like an iris. You can do the center. So the center kind of comes down like this. Sorry, I have a customer who wanted chocolate icing and I did like vanilla buttercream. These things happen. <laughs> this is real life here. You guys are in the kitchen with me. Um, let's see, I'm trying to think of what other flowers I can make. I was gonna talk a little bit briefly about before you put the flowers on the cake, I really like to put down some greenery just to add to it. So it's kind of boring if you just throw a flower on top. Let's see here. So, Lauren, we have a question for you when you get a second. Second. A what? We have a question for you. Yeah, bring it on. Um, the question is: Do you usually make? And I think it. I think the intention was: Do you usually make your roses before you decorate the cake so they're pre-done? No, okay. I put them on, I put the roses on as I'm decorating the cake. So actually, let me do this since I'm getting ready to put the greenery on there. I have a cake I need to decorate. <laughs> since this is due in about an hour, we should do this now. So let's see, I'm going to put the greenery on and then that way you guys can kind of see the steps, the different steps that I take to build the cake to completion, basically, you know. So do some of these vines first. You guys see this? I hope so. And then I cut the end of my bag in a little triangle to be able, I don't know if you guys can see that, to be able to make the leaves. And I'm going to put Some of those down first. And I just add some foliage and then also I make it a little bit bigger to lay down the leaves for the actual larger flowers. Put those down first because that helps to give your petals more dimension so that they're not just like flat on the cake and your flowers as well so that you have something to kind of set them on top of. And that really helps to add to, you know, just the design. We have another question. Can I read it out? 
please yes okay to get the two-toned effect do you load the darker on the large side of the rose tip or the or the narrower end uh the narrower end of it and um i just scoop them both up on my spatula and then i kind of look inside the bag and like stick it in really carefully like that and like use my hand to kind of pull it out so that it stays where i want it to um that did take some practice <laughs> in a bunch of cases so um it's easier for me but i definitely would suggest to if you're not used to working with your spatula and picking them both up like that you can even um lay them side by side on let's say some uh, plastic wrap and then wrap that up into like a little ball and then you can put that inside of your decorating bag and that'll keep your colors you know where you want them to as well so that always helps too um when you're getting started out let's see my flowers are here. we're just going to do some simple red roses on here I also start off with um, little rose buds. I start with the smaller flowers first, kind of stick those on there. Just a couple since this is such a small cake. And then on top of the leaves. And you can see it kind of helps the flower to have like a little bit of an angle so that the next ones can kind of face different ways. It really helps to just make it look a little bit more realistic, even though it's flower green. Let me know if you guys need me to like slow down or explain anything else or anything like that. Any other questions, just you know, let me know. We're asking the questions as they pop up in the chat. Um, so we'll just keep doing that. Okay. You're doing great. I can't believe how easy you make that look. <laughs> <laughs> Only because I have lots of practice. I think that repetition is really what's important with decorating. Um, you know, when I went to culinary school, they, they give you the basics, but it's really up to you to practice and I know, you know, I would just have all my bags of icing at home and I would just sit there and do this. I'm obsessed. You know, I watch all the Instagram stuff. I'm, I actually was following Ms. Haley here on Instagram. So I was super excited to do this collaboration with her because, you know, it's like basically when you're into it, it's all you think about, you know, I'm at home in bed at night, like looking at all the videos and stuff. It's ridiculous. So anyhow, this is fun to A little tiny guy I'm running out of icing but that's okay got this little guy and there's a little spot right there and i just want to cover that up mm. and you know, that's it mm. put little leaves on top of the rosebuds fill it in a little bit and that's it and you're ready to write on the cake does anybody want to know about writing or any tips like that or I don't know I'm just kind of throwing stuff out there because I wasn't really sure what people were going to want to learn but if you guys think of anything you just let me know be happy to tell you right on here though real quick and we'll have time at the end for questions as well so if anyone has a question oh, sure. is this cake uh, for somebody in particular yes it's for Tina <laughs> And you can see the, the top there. <laughs> Yay. Happy birthday, Tina. Yes, happy birthday, right? <laughs> Let's stick this in the cooler really quick. So I don't know, that's about all I have as far as tips and um, things like that. If there's anything else you guys want to know, just let me know and I'd be happy to do some more demonstration. I think what we'll do is we'll go ahead and move on to Haley's demo and yeah. then we'll take some time for questions at the end um, and people can ask either either of you or both of you questions. Maybe you both have different answers to the same question. So, um, okay, Haley, you ready? I'm going to go ahead and introduce you.
I'm here at Wayside doing my demo. I usually bake out of my house. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go over how to frost a cake if you were at home. So there's no big need for a whole lot of like equipment. Um, Lauren had a cake stand and I wish I had mine because it does make it so much easier, especially like on your wrists. Um, so I'm going to fluff this frosting real quick and then we'll go from there. So what I have right now is I have my cakes already like bared, called a crumb coat. So it just kind of gets everything going here. I like to smooth this food out before I start putting more frosting on it, just to make sure it's like somewhat more even. I'll go through. As you're going about frosting a cake, you want to use this, you want to have this side on the outside as you're going around the cake and keep the slotted side inward. It helps you keep it even all the way around. And I just like to build it up kind of sloppy at first because you do smooth it out at the end. So if you're anything like me, you're kind of OCD and you like things to look super nice, don't worry, it will look nicer towards the end. Haley, we have a question for you. What's up? Uh, what are the ingredients of your frosting? This frosting is actually it's a whip frosting and I'm going to show you what I use for it because it's super easy to get and it's it's kind of like a hidden gem. I don't know how to explain it other than when I found it, it was from the few times that I had worked at some panderias back home. And if you don't know what a panderia is, it's a Mexican bread bakery. Um, they also use, I don't know if you've ever seen a cream horn before, but cream horns are pretty popular in some panderias. And this particular whip filling that I'm using um, is used to make that, that filling. So it's surprisingly vegan. It doesn't have, it's technically science, but I hate to say it, but a lot of vegan food is already halfway science. So um, it's no, it's nothing too bad. It does have soy in it. So if you have a soy allergy, I wouldn't recommend that you use it. And it does have some palm oil. Let me just get the basic of this. What I'm using to smooth out the side is just what's called a bench scraper. Um, you can get these just about anywhere. They come plastic. Here, I'm sure you guys can see it. They can come plastic or metal. I prefer metal so that it stays pretty firm the whole time. Um, also metal lasts longer. As you go around the cake, you want to do that right there. Okay. Now I'm gonna show you what I use. And Haley, somebody is, is, oh, sorry, somebody was wondering if the frosting was room temperature. Say that again. Somebody was wondering if the frosting was room temperature. No, this frosting you want to keep cold. So this is called Rich's Whip Topping. Um, I've seen it come in like tubes pre-whipped and that isn't vegan. But this stuff out of the box, it's vegan. There's nothing non-vegan about it. It's pretty much all vegetable oils and some high fructose corn syrup. 
Um, it's really, really easy to obtain. You can get it at the cash and carry. It's five bucks. If you want to make your own vegan frosting, you don't want to have to go through having to get earth balance and powdered sugar and you just want to practice. This stuff is super, super easy. It's cheap. It's like five bucks. I do not use it for my cakes that you guys, if anybody's had my cakes, this is not what I use. This is just what I'm using to demo today and to show you how to just get a frosting gown. Um, I don't like to discuss my actual, my, uh, my original frosting because it's kind of my own little secret and I want to keep it that way. <laughs> but I love Rich's whipped frosting. It is so yummy. Um, whenever I make pies, I whip this stuff up and I'll add coconut cream to it and it tastes just like the stuff out of like the Cool Whip. I don't know. It's so good. I love, I love the way it tastes. I also um, will admit that I like the way cheap stuff tastes more than like fancier stuff. I don't know why. But yeah. Was there another question? I'm sorry. I think that was it. There was somebody that said, I can't believe that's vegan. I know I couldn't believe it was vegan either. I was, it was, uh, somebody recommended it to me and it says it's a non-dairy topping. And I'm like, well, there's probably caseinate in it. There's no caseinate. There's no casein, no whey, nothing other than soy. Um, it's even got natural flavors in it with turmeric. Crazy. Um, I did add some vanilla bean to it to kind of make it taste better. So... So that's how, this is what I got. Just use it on a plate. I don't know if everybody can see that. Pretty simple. Now, I'm gonna put some frosting on this dude. A uh, little decorative border. So my favorite tip is a 1M. I love a 1M. If you're too intimidated to actually make roses and you would rather not deal with the struggle and all that, I like to use a 1M. I know how to make roses, but whenever I have a bunch of cake orders, I honestly get lazy and I'm just like, I'll just make a rose with this. So I'm gonna show you guys what my roses look like, but that's not gonna be the base of this. So it's just to show you. So whenever you wanna fill your piping bag, by the way, I like to get a big wide, cup of some sort or a container. I don't know if anybody eats a lot of pho from Denang, but I do. So I keep their cup filled with containers and they're my favorite to fill frosting with. That is a hot tip. <laughs> they're reusable. They're so good. I love them. I use them for everything. When you're piping, keep in mind to keep, um, you can usually see if there's air inside your bag and you wanna make sure that the air is all the way gone. To get it out, you can squeeze downwards and then also kind of like work your fingers up gently and you're pretty good to go. So. So there's just a little bit of a border. I'm going to take the camera in just a second to show y'all how I do the rosettes and what they look like. This is the one. All right, I'm gonna get a little janky here for a minute. So where is my camera? Hold on, oops. Can y'all see that? Yes, it's beautiful. It's okay. moving around, but it's beautiful. Okay. So here's another one. Oh, that is not a good one. Never mind. Don't look at that. Okay. Looks good to me. So you see how that's kind of just so easy to do with that 1M? I'm going to put you guys back.
Um, yeah. this here okay. and that's about that for the frosting part I wish that I could have demoed how to do this part but I don't have enough time to do it this is some vegan white chocolate that I made at my house. Um, vegan white chocolate is usually just made with cocoa butter and powdered sugar. And you just melt it together and you whip it and it comes out pretty good. But I'm just gonna decorate this with some of this melted white chocolate. If you can imagine it, if you were to ever wanna make some really nice decorative chocolate work, all you have to do is just make a double broiler. If you don't know what a double broiler is, it's a little pot of hot water and then you put a bowl fitted to it on top um, you don't get water in the bowl and then you put your chocolate in that bowl and you let it slowly melt and you can usually how do i say lay it on some parchment paper and kind of smear it really thin and you let it freeze for a little while and then it should come out like this and you can just break it up and put it everywhere another hot tip So this is like the final product of it. This is just something quick I put together just to kind of show y'all that it's super easy to kind of make your cakes look fancy. Um, if I had more decorative stuff with me, I would have put more stuff on it, but this is still pretty good. This is still sellable for me. Um, this is my champagne cake that I am running for my holiday specials. So if you ordered one, this is somewhat what it will look like. It'll look a, it'll be pink when I do it, but yeah, this is it. <laughs> it's gorgeous. Were there any questions? So yeah, we can go ahead and open up the questions now. Um, any questions that anyone has for Lauren or Haley? And Lauren, just so you know, I muted you so you could keep working, um, but feel free to unmute yourself whenever. Um, I actually have a question um, for you, Haley. Um, so you make a lot of cakes where you, it looks like you maybe blow torch them or um, do a little like burnt, you know, kind of effect on them. What was that last part? I can barely uh, hear you. Like a, like a blow torch. Oh, Could whenever I make my that? meringues, yeah. Um, what's the question with that? Just how you do it. How do I make a marshmallow? Or how do you make them look look like that? Like, what's your what's your technique? What kind of frosting? And um, is it a meringue? When I do the toasted the, the toasted looking frosting, that's actually a it's a marshmallow, and it's a vegan marshmallow that I whip up. Um, the ingredients for that are pretty simple, but it's the process of making it happen. You have to boil down um, a sugar and then you get the sugar to, I believe, softball. So you need a candy thermometer and you whip up the meringue because if you're familiar with how marshmallows are traditionally, Marshmallows are made from egg whites. So in vegan baking, we're having to come up with ways to create egg whites. Egg whites at this point has been aquafaba. So aquafaba is garbanzo bean juice. And what I'll do is I'll reduce my garbanzo bean juice to half of its liquid out of the can. So usually a can, a small can will yield about half a cup and you can reduce it down to about a quarter cup. It's going to get a little complicated, so I hope you guys are bearing with me. Um, it really is science. So I take that reduced aquafaba, I put it in a, in a mixer bowl with a whip attachment, and this is your whip attachment. Um, you want to put it on high speed. 
after you get the syrup going, you're gonna pour it in as the uh, um, as the whip is going, and then it'll start to emulsify and build. And as it builds, you eventually create what is like a meringue that would be used to make marshmallow. And I usually have to like quickly get it on the cake because the minute it starts to set, it's like impossible to move and it starts stiffening. And yeah, then you just get your torch and you just lightly torch it. And that's, that's about how you do it. I hope that all made sense. There are some videos, I don't know. I don't know where I got the recipe from. A lot of these recipes I've just kind of had with me for years now. And there are a lot, it's a lot of gathered information that I've seen from other people who have had success. But yeah, that's how you get the toasted look. It's a, it's a marshmallow. They are totally beautiful. So if people have questions, they can either put them in the chat or you can just kind of raise your hand um, and we'll just kind of scan through and uh, we can just let you um, sing them out loud or you can or you can put them in the chat. And Emily has a question. Aggie, you want to read it? You want me to read it? I can read it. Um, okay, the question is, how do you come up with new flavors and kinds of cakes, and do you have a personal favorite? How do I come up with new flavors? Um, this is gonna sound so corny. I have no idea how I do it, other than like, there was a time when I smoked way too much weed, and it was just constant ideas of like, oh, that would be great. Oh, that would be great. Damn, that sounds, sounds so good. And, um, uh, I will say a lot of my flavors have come from like what I ate growing up. <laughs> and, um, a lot of like, what is it? There was this one pandaria that always made this really good cannoli cake and I still haven't achieved a cannoli that I like, but I'm, that's, that's like, I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> the flavors that I come up with honestly just kind of come to me at random. I do not smoke weed anymore. I'm, I'm not sober, but I'm definitely not like somebody who smokes anymore. I also don't even drink. Um, and yeah, I don't know. They just kind of come to me. A lot of it has been a challenge, like making vegan white chocolate. I looked up a recipe and it had hardly any success and I kind of found it as a challenge and I was like, well, I'm going to make it and make sure that it tastes like what's sold on the shelves or if not better. And it seemed to work really well. Oh, sorry. It seemed to work really well and I had some success with it. So it's partially like inner child wants sweets and also I find challenges out there that I want to succeed at like the vegan marshmallow i don't see a lot of people making their own vegan marshmallow i don't see a lot of people making like their own vegan white chocolate either um stuff like that does that answer the question <laughs> lauren did you want to answer that question oh i can't hear you Can you hear me now? You can hear me now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty much the same. I think, like, you know, Haley was just saying, we, we just kind of think of stuff like, oh man, that sounds good. Or even just chat with your friend, family, friends, you know, whoever you're close to. People, can you make this? People have a lot of requests. And it's fun to like take their request and even build off of that. Or, you know, it just depends. Like right now, I mean, I've had my mom, for instance, my mom is obsessed with the low keto, low, you know, carb thing. And so she has me working on making a cake for her with no sugar and no gluten. And it actually tastes pretty good. So, you know, it's kind of, it's fun to experiment. It's, it's fun to just think of stuff, you know, and it's, it's brainstorming with your friends and things. And sometimes it's, like you said, you see something and you think I could do that or even better, or, you know, it's almost like a challenge. Like what you're saying with the vegan that, I mean, what Haley's talking about is so true. It's just like, that's a challenge. It's like challenge accepted, you know, and she does a really great job of that, you know? So I think that's really cool. I had no idea that that riches was not like, no, you know, it's vegan. I'm like, what? It's vegan. I can 
it's, I can't that. it's right really now. sturdy too like this is you it you know that yeah <laughs> it's so sturdy like it is. I left it out on the counter for a whole day just to see what would happen yeah it, it didn't budge it's fine which but is the I part where it's like it's totally science mm -hmm. but it still tastes good you can spruce it up and all these things it's really yeah. good Yes, she blew my mind today, you guys. And that's another thing. I think that, you know, like I said, I've been doing this a long time, but you can always learn something new, you know, so it's always good to connect with people in your community. I've gotten to know a lot of the bakers in the area just since I've moved here. And it's good just to ask them, you know, and just like now, I did not know. I am so excited to know that now. This past weekend, it's like, what? Yes. I personally can't eat dairy. So that eliminates a lot of things for me personally, which is a bummer. So I'm excited to know that that riches, non-dairy, good stuff. It's and it tastes very good. So that's good to know. <laughs> it's exciting. I um I had somebody ask a question um in the in the registration about gluten-free baking, um and they didn't really ask anything specific. But if either one of you would like to speak to anything about gluten-free baking, um, I'm sure that would be welcomed by them. The only, the only thing that I have learned um, since kind of playing around with that, like I said, it's not my specialty, but the thing that I have figured out is the more different flours you blend together, the better the flavor seems to be. Like I wouldn't just use brown rice flour or almond flour or coconut flour. I like to mix all of the different things together and kind of figure out my own ratio for flavor and texture and stuff too. I don't know, maybe Haley's got some uh, good tips, so. <laughs> um, that's about what I've got about it. My my blend is, is particularly special because I've messed with it for so long and I finally found something that stays, stays risen and it stays fluffy and it stays moist. Um, but it is a mix of like, five different starches and technical yeah. flours. I will say one thing that doesn't get mentioned a whole lot in gluten-free baking is xanathan gum is really important, but you don't want to overuse it. It's the one thing that keeps all of your starches bound yeah. because in gluten-free, there's no protein to keep anything together. And yeah. There's no gluten either. So you have to like use all these cool little dudes to stick together and keep everyone all tight, but. That's about all I can really say about with gluten-free baking. So long as you have xanathan gum in the mix, you're usually gonna come out pretty good. Um, a lot of the stuff that I see on the shelves, I don't use Bob's Red Mill anymore because I like my own blend, but Bob's Red Mill is a pretty good go-to gluten-free flour mix. They're one-to-one -one ratio. Anyways. Thank you, that's great. Does anyone else? Oh, I, we have a person coming in. Does anybody else have any questions um, for Haley and Lauren? I can't. That damn gum is real, Haley. I put too much in, it was like cement. I was like, oh God. What did you do? <laughs> I said, I, said that, I said that the um, I said the xanthium gum is real because I put too much in and it was like I couldn't even get it in the pan because it was already like congealing in the mixer and I thought uh oh so it's definitely I respect your craft because it's hard to figure all that out it's not nice. I start with a quarter teaspoon that's another yeah. thing keep uh, in yeah. mind start with a quarter teaspoon <laughs> and then work your way up because if you put a tablespoon in it's gonna be like a rubber spatula yeah. like it's yeah. insane <laughs> which is pretty amazing it's amazing stuff i'm like what is this you know because it's foreign to me but yeah <laughs> that's cool oh, and gluten-free gluten-free batters are more sensitive to being over mixed than yeah. regular the minute you over mix them it's over like just say hello to the rubber cake <laughs> Um, okay, we have a couple more questions here. Um, Patty wants to know where are your businesses, which is a great question. We've got some thank yous in the mix as well. Um, I'm I'm downtown Olympia, and we are in the same building as Fishtail Brewing. We're right on Legion Way. It's 422 Legion Way Southeast. 
if you look up uh, Gaudi Suites on Google, you'll see the maps and stuff. I'm pretty easy to find though. I am, I don't have a location yet. I will, I didn't want to say this, but I guess I'll say it now. I'm going to be having my cakes uh, distributed by Stellar Juices here in the next few weeks. So they will be back out there and they're going to be available by the quarter. Um, I'm going to be working on trying to get my smaller cakes available other places, but right now I don't have a location. I'm just based out of my home and working out of like a cottage license. So that's about where I'm at right now. That's awesome that Stellar Juices is going to do that. And they are, they're like kind of near, they're near the, the CrossFit place kind of, right? They're near the CrossFit place behind the police station. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's where they are. They're like right, right in that area. They're next to a yoga loft as well. Yeah. Right next to Gravity Yoga. Yeah. 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 They're actually, they're around the corner from me right here. They're around the corner. Stellar juices. Yeah. Yeah. They are. Yeah. They're not too far from Lauren. So Haley, if someone wants to get one of your cakes, how do they do that? If you get on my Instagram and you find me on there, you can just send me a direct message and I'll get you hooked up. Right now, my December books are closed. I'm full to the brim, so I can't take any more orders. I'm trying to fit like one or two more in, but it's pretty it's pretty stacked right now. Um, and January is open, so if anybody wants a cake in January, I have plenty of openings right now. Okay, here's another question. Oh, we have two questions. Um, one question is, what's the best vegan buttermilk substitute? Uh, there's no vegan buttermilk out there that's pre-made, but my favorite way to make buttermilk is just soy milk with a little bit of lemon juice. Um, if you're going to use coconut milk or oat milk, it takes longer to curdle. So that's the only downfall. I choose soy just because it's faster. Um, if you're gonna, if you can't do soy milk, oat milk does really well, and um, almond milk does really well as well. I mean, as too. So yeah, that would be the best way to do it. Um, lemon juice is the best route. Apple cider vinegar works pretty well, but I prefer the taste of lemon over apple cider vinegar. Thank you. And then another question for Haley: um, Was it hard to obtain the cottage license? Was it hard to obtain what? Sorry, was it hard to obtain the cottage license? Was cottage, it hard? Cottage. No, it did Sorry. take a while. And after getting it, I, it almost wasn't necessary, but it was, it's, it's nice to have. It kind of gives me a little bit more free range on what to do. Um, my restriction right now is that I don't have a big enough kitchen and getting a bigger kitchen is like the next step. But no, it wasn't hard. It does take time though. It took a few months. Great. Oh, um, okay. Another, another question for Haley. Hot tips for vegan caramel. Ooh. There's a lot to say about that just because caramel, caramel crystallizes so easy. Um, and that's because of if you're making caramel sauce and you're starting with just butter and straight brown sugar or regular sugar, the problem with that is that sugar already holds water in it and it creates crystals as it burns and it starts to caramelize. The best way that I've ever made caramel sauce without it getting crunchy after sitting for a day is using a little bit of corn syrup and that makes it more smooth and easy to pour. So that would be my hot tip for caramels. Like if you're using a recipe, pour a little bit of uh, corn syrup in there um, and it should help because corn, syrup's, corn syrup has already had the water boiled out of it and it's just sugar at that point. All right. Does anyone else have any other questions? We might be, we might be wrapping it up a, a little bit early. Um, if anyone, oh, okay, here's another question. Um, would you like to have your own bakery instead? Probably for Haley. <laughs> would I like to have my own bakery? 
I would. It would be nice. It's definitely been a commitment going through with what I've gone through so far, but at this point, it's starting to look more of like a bright future to go ahead with. Having my own kitchen and bakery would be really fun. I think I think it would do well at this point. And then the other uh, follow-up question to the cottage license is, do you feel like it's hard to try new things with your cottage license? Is it hard to try new things? No, the cottage license just makes it, it's really just a, it's just a way for the state to keep track of, I would say foodborne illnesses versus anything else. You can do whatever you want once you get the cottage license. Um, I don't wanna just stop with cakes. Um, there are ideas that I have out there. If any of you have had a puff pastry from Parkside and notice that the puff pastry isn't there anymore. It's because it's my puff pastry and I have been doing a lot of work behind the scenes aside from cake making with coming up with more puff pastries ideas. I don't see a whole lot of puff pastry in town and um, I can't, I'm, you know, I don't eat eggs or milk. So I think with the cottage license, it shouldn't restrict me from going further from cakes. So. So no, there's no restrictions. You can do a lot with a cottage license. It's just a way for the state to keep track of businesses. Thank you. Well, any um, any last minute questions or Lauren or Haley, do you have any closing, closing thoughts for these? Um, there's a lot of people um, in this Zoom that are really amazing bakers in their own right. Um, so any, any last minute um, comments or thoughts for home bakers? I say just have fun with it. I feel like, you know, it's a fun thing. I'm very blessed and very lucky to do something that I enjoy doing every day. You know, yes, it's long hours. Yes, it's hard. Yes, yes, yes. It's heavy lifting of flour and bags of this and that, but it is so worth it. And I meet so many cool customers and so many cool people and other bakers. And I just think that have fun, experiment, try things out. I mean, you know, mix it up. The whole vegan and gluten-free is so wide open with so many different combinations of things to try. So I think we're all kind of excited to take a stab at it after listening to Haley and yeah. myself because <laughs> it's fun. It's fun to do different things. It's fun to switch it up. I mean, I make good old fashioned cake, but I, I think it's always fun to try and branch out and make other things too. So, yeah, I definitely love what I'm doing right now. It's a dream come true and it does take a lot of practice and just messing up and then figuring it out from there. Like, what could I have done? Maybe this happened. Google is definitely a good place to start if you ever mess up on something, but yeah, it doesn't mean that you're going to fail completely. Just just keep trying at it. Um, I also take questions. If you ever want to message me online, I usually can answer questions pretty fast. Um, but if anybody ever wanted to reach out and ask me for advice on what to do, let me know. I have a question for you. I'm sorry to interrupt you. I have a question. Do you ever use the aquafaba for macarons, for French macarons? I'm curious. Have you tried that? Macarons were not easy. It's still okay. really hard. It's really hard. I think what it's coming down to is if we can geek out about macarons, it's seeming like the first time I tried them, they were goopy and they were still foldy, you know, like they were still soft and they didn't yeah. want to harden. Um, my new I mean, idea I mean, is to just beef it up. Like, they're hard to make regardless. They're really hard. They're not so easy to I make. Guess, I guess about like do you have any tips or do you use the aquafaba for that? Is that like something that's a good replacement? Cause I'm like kind of playing around with that, but I'm just like, oh my God. My idea is that it's originally done with the garbanzo bean, but I've been thinking about trying it with pinto bean juice instead because Ooh. it's got more protein in it. And I think that's what the problem is. Okay. Um, even black bean juice is pretty, is higher in protein. Huh, so okay. I think it has to do with that. I haven't had success with the vegan macarons. I have not. Okay. I've been trying though. I had to ask. <laughs> I've been trying though. It's not easy. No, I know. <laughs> I know. Yeah. 
I think the best, uh, I think the best vegan cookies I've had that seem successful are like um, snickerdoodles. Seems like you can make a really good vegan snickerdoodle. Yeah. Was that Carly's cupcakes? I just saw something. Carly's cupcakes. Check them out. She does vegan stuff. Is that what it said? I'm gonna Google. I'll, I'll Google her. I'll be on Instagram later. <laughs> Carly's cupcakes. If she, if it's that person I'm thinking of, she does like, she's just pretty much like an Instagram baker, kind of. I mean, she does something out in the East Coast. Carly's yeah. Cupcakes is pretty good. Um, I've seen some of her demos and I think some of her recipes are pretty good. I've never tried them out, but I think they're pretty good. They gotta be. I'll check that out too. She has like her own buttercream now. She's crazy. I don't see that question, so they must have sent you a, a direct message. <laughs> All right. Any any last last call? Last call for questions. All right. I think we're gonna go ahead and, and wrap it up. I forgot to take pictures. Uh <laughs> Forgot thank you. I have to say thank you so much for everyone. Thank you, Kelsey, for all your efforts helping us put this together. Yeah. And it was really fun doing this. My so if you pleasure. guys missed it again, let me know. But thank you yeah. all of you for joining us today. It was really cool. And everybody says thank you all very much. Um, so awesome. Thank you so much. So I'm gonna try and put this up on, on the YouTube um in the next couple weeks. So if anyone uh talks to you about missing the program and wants to check it out. Um, hopefully it will be up uh, as soon as I can figure out how to upload to YouTube. So um, thank you both so much. Um, and yeah, everybody don't don't forget to frequent these two great businesses. Um, and be in touch uh, if you have any questions or if you have any um, suggestions for other programs you'd like to see the library offer through Zoom. You can um, email us, and I'll put the email in the chat. It's asklib at trl.org. And you can um, you can just suggest that it gets sent to Kelsey or Aggie, and it'll get forwarded. And uh, I thank you all for coming this afternoon. And have a great day. Thanks for everyone that showed up. Bye.